What's up YouTube? It's Coach Corey and today we are going to rank all of the brawlers for Smash and Grab. I'm going to tell you guys the worst brawlers. I'm going to tell you guys the best brawlers for Smash and Grab. Alright, so let's get into it. Okay, so before we start, I do want to remind you guys that this is just my personal opinion and also just because a brawler is ranked low on my ranking does not mean you can't win with it. Of course, team composition is one of the most important things, especially in Smash and Grab, so just because it's ranked low doesn't mean you can't win with it. Alright, so let's start out at the bottom and starting at 19, actually let's do 19 and 18 at the same time because these are pretty similar in my opinion. At 19 we have Piper. And at 18, we have Brock. Now, to me, these guys are just not really meant for smash and grab. Especially Piper. She's not bad on Crystal Cavern, actually. But even then, it's not that great. For smash and grab, her reload is just too slow. She can basically get the final kill and you can steal all their gems and then you can win. But to me, she's just not consistent enough. Same with Brock. The maps just don't really suit them very well. Especially in an objective-oriented map, everyone tends to be fairly close to the gem mine. Piper and Brock are much better from a distance. Smash and Grab is not really their strength. That's why you see them list low on the ranking. Alright, now let's go over 17. So 17 is going to be Mortis. Now, some people still think that Mortis is an okay gem grabber, but to me, he's really, really bad at being a gem grabber. Yes, he's great at dashing in and getting gems and he can escape some, but if that's all you're doing, you're not attacking the enemy, you're not dealing any damage, it's basically a two on three. And the main way you're gonna win with Mortis like that is if one of your teammates gets a kill of the gem grabber and then you go and take the gems and you dash away. That's pretty much the main way you're gonna win with Mortis. And the other thing that hurts Mortis is right now it's a tank meta and in Smash and Grab that's no different. So tanks, Mortis not very good against. There's also a ton of anti-tanks as well. Brawlers that are really good versus tanks and those brawlers are also really good versus Mortis. So that's why he's at 17. Alright, 16. Another brawler I wouldn't really use but he's okay and that's going to be Colt. Colt to me just doesn't have the damage. He's not quite useful enough. Uh, he's really just not that great anymore since his range nerf, especially in smash and grab and the meta just also isn't great for me either. But let's go on to the next brawler. I think this one is going to surprise you guys a little bit and 15 is Shelly. Shelly to me is just really underwhelming. Unlike some of the other medium range brawlers, she doesn't really have a super that necessarily changes the tide of the game. Yes, her super is really good versus tanks, but she has to be point blank next to someone or really close next to someone for it to be that useful. Another mid range brawler, Tara, doesn't have to be nearly as close. Spike doesn't have to be nearly as close. Nita, not the same. Shelly, just not quite the same utility and doesn't have the same damage output either. She doesn't have good chip shots. Her damage is great in close range, but that's pretty much it. She's not that bad. You can definitely use her. I think she's a good amount better than the four brawlers ranked below her, but to me, she's still really underwhelming. All right, and now let's do the next two at once since these are pretty similar brawlers, and honestly, I think you can switch them. I wasn't exactly sure which one was over, but I have at 14, I have Dynamite. In 13, I have Barley. Now, these are interesting brawlers because if you put them on a map-by-map -map basis, their ranking is going to be pretty different. If you're looking at Mushroom Cave and you're looking at Deep Hollows, they're going to be probably top 8 brawlers on those two maps. Throwers are really good on those two maps for sure. You probably want to use one of those two at least on those maps. But on the other maps, it's not so much. They're really not that great on any sort of open field map. Um, it's too easy to dodge their attacks and not consistent damage and without them being able to hide behind walls and throw away at people they don't have the same damage output or danger they're not the same utility temple catacombs are okay but those two maps deep hollows and mushroom cave are going to be their main places you want to use them otherwise they're really not that great all right now at number 12 this brawler has really taken a big fall recently since the past couple balance changes used to be probably in the top three one of the best brawlers in smash grab not so anymore at 12 we have pam pam to me not nearly the same place she was before 
The balance changes hurt her a little bit. I think her damage output just doesn't feel like quite the same as before, but also the meta is just really bad for her. Honestly, Pam is better in a long range meta where her healing turret is much more useful and going to be used even more. But in a tank meta, tanks aren't really going to be using her healing turret that much. And if you're playing aggressive turrets, Playing your healing station aggressive further up so the tanks can use it, it's also going to die a lot faster. So Pam, a lot of it has to do with the meta being not as good, that's where she drops. And then also, all the other gem carriers, Bo, Poco, and Jesse, and even some others, got buffs. So that's where you see Pam being lower, and all those guys got buffs, they're now much better. And Pam really didn't get any buffs, she's sort of, not exactly nerfed, basically the same, but the meta made her worse, and then the other guys got buffs. That's why I see Pam at 12. All right, and now at 11, we have our first tank. We have El Primo. El Primo to me is the most underwhelming tank. Yes, he has a ton of health, but his hits just aren't that great. His range is the shortest of all brawlers in the game. And then once he gets in range, he just doesn't consistently hit people. He gets maybe three or four hits, but even then it's not a lot of damage. Even three or four hits is usually pretty good with El Primo. You're not gonna get many more in one attack. So to me, El Primo, he just doesn't end up dealing enough damage as a tank. He's not threatening enough. And you honestly, he's a little bit easier to counter too since his range isn't the same. A lot of things with tanks too is you need to be able to charge up their super a ton. That way they can get back in on the action anytime they die. El Primo, not as easy to do so. And those are some reasons why is at number 11. All right, so now at number 10, we have Bo. Bo to me is pretty good, but he's not great. He's not amazing. His mines definitely are pretty good now, especially with the added knockback that made him really decent. He has a lot of health too, so he's not a bad option on a lot of the maps. Um, he's honestly not a great option either. Basically, he's a pretty good gem carrier. He has okay damage and he has enough range to be useful in a lot of different scenarios, but that's gonna be pretty much it for Bo. All right, and now at nine, we have Ricochet. So Ricochet to me is actually pretty good. Even though he got nerfed two balance changes ago with his health decrease, he still does a ton of damage potentially on a couple maps, especially so like Temple Catacombs is a great example. Crystal Cavern, if he's on the left side of the map, there's some other maps, Hard Rock Mine. Um, he can deal a good amount of damage on those maps and his super can be really devastating if he catches people in the right places. Bone Box, another good example. Ricochet, his bounce shot potential is great on a lot of different maps so he can still deal a good amount of damage and that's still king in a lot of different ways. So Ricochet is going to be a pretty decent brawler. He's not going to be amazing but he has a good support role. He can definitely help win you a lot of games. He can help keep the enemy team back he's not that bad at spawn trapping so ricochet to me is pretty deserving of his number nine ranking all right and now at number eight we have crow crow to me is a pretty interesting brawler he's not really great but he can put out a lot of pressure on the enemy team he can make it really hard for them to heal up and it makes it a lot easier for your team to establish control of the map, which is really key in smash and grab. And that's why you actually see him pretty high, even though he's not being used nearly as much as he was before, he's still a pretty decent option, especially with Pam being a little bit lower usage rate than before. Pam counters Crow pretty well, so it, he helps Crow out a little bit in that sense too, but Crow to me is still not bad. He can put a lot of pressure on the enemy and he's pretty good in this meta. All right, and now at number seven, I think this one might surprise you guys a little bit, but at seven, we have Poco. So Poco, to me, he is probably the best gem grabber in the game right now, but he's a little bit underwhelming as well. Just as far as how much he affects the team, his damage output isn't that great. He really, really relies on his teammates in order to win games. Yes, he can carry the gems really well, and he has a good ability to not die, but once you lose control of the map, Poco isn't going to be someone that's going to help you get control of the map again. And he's not great at keeping control. He relies on his teammates a lot to do a lot of the work for him. He can keep them alive, but especially in this tank meta where it takes Poco, you know, nine or ten hits to kill a tank. And a lot of these high health guys, Poco's just not able to deal a lot of killing blows. It's just honestly, he relies on his teammates a lot. He's still a really good brawler, 
Seven is a pretty good ranking, and he's the best jam carrier right now. But to me, he's just not overpowered in any sense. All right, and now we're getting to some brawlers that are really strong, in my opinion, and all have the ability to win games by themselves. These brawlers can carry games. So at number six, we have Tara. Tara, really good in smash and grab. Her super is able to pull a bunch of people together and can easily win games by herself, especially when she has a teammate attacking with her. Even if the enemy team has a Poco, if you pull in a couple people with Tara super and you have teammates attacking, the enemy Poco doesn't have time to heal up. It's a game changing super. It can help spawn trap. Tara's always been pretty good in smash and grab, and usually in this meta, you're gonna have at least one or two brawlers that combine well with Tara's super. So it has a lot of potential, and even if you're down a bunch, she has a great way to come back into the game. All right, and now at number five, we have a tank. We have Bull. Bull, to me, is really good in this meta. Even with his recent nurse, he's still one of the better brawlers in smash and grab. He's a great tank. He has a ton of health. He's able to deal a lot of damage. He's great at spawn trapping. He can super into the enemy gem carry and take their gems, hit it a couple of people, and super out or he can help stop other enemy tanks. He's really good in this meta. And at number four, we have the other tank. We have Daryl. These two, really similar in my opinion, but both of their supers and their abilities are great ways to win games. They can either super away with gems, they can super towards people. They deal a ton of damage at close range and you can't ignore them. If an enemy Daryl or a bull flanks you, they pose a lot of pressure on the enemy team. You basically have to double team them in order to get them out, unless you have a spike, maybe. But for the most part, a lot of times you have to double team enemy tanks behind you or in your grass. It's a huge threat to you and your team, so that's why these guys are ranked really high. They're really good in smash and grab right now. All right, now these next three brawlers are, in my opinion, a little bit overpowered. They're all really, really good in smash and grab, and you want at least one, two, or even th all of them on your team. So at number three, we have Jessie. Jessie can deal a ton of damage right now. Her turret can deal a ton of damage. She can keep her turret up. It applies a lot of pressure and control on the enemy team, especially in this meta where you're seeing not as many long range brawlers. There's not as many brawlers on the enemy team who have a good potential and ability to take out Jesse's turret, especially with her star power. So it puts a lot of pressure on the enemy team and there's a lot of bounce shot potential with a lot of big heavy brawlers. You see a lot of tanks. Jesse can get a lot of easy chip shots on those brawlers and she just puts out a really high damage output through the course of a game. She may struggle a little bit until she gets her turret, but once she has that up, she can put a lot of control on the map and it makes it really hard for the enemy team to get control of the center of the map and deal with that turret. All right, and now at number two, the second best brawler in Smash and Grab is Nita. Nita got some buffs recently. Now one of the higher health brawlers in the game for range brawlers, over 5,000 health and max. Has a ton of health, a great ability to hit around corners with her shot. She's really good versus tanks. She can do a lot of chip shots really fast. She can build up her super pretty fast. She can, her bear applies a lot of pressure now with that added move speed. Nita to me, one of the better brawlers in the game right now and really, really good in smash and grab. Enemy Nidas are just not easy to deal with, especially once they have a bear up. They can put a lot of pressure on the enemy, but the main ability is their ability to hit around walls and corners that other people can't do nearly as well as Nita. And combine that with a bear, she can win a lot of 1v1s and establish control of her side of the map. To me, Nita is just really strong right now, especially in this meta. She's a great counter for tanks, can put a lot of pressure on tanks, can have far enough range away to make tanks hard for them to come into her and attack her and still deal a ton of damage to them and make them either force forward and die or run away further back up the map. All right, and now at number one, the best brawler in smash and grab right now, if you haven't guessed it, it's Spike. Spike is really, really strong right now, especially because of this meta. Spike is one of the best counters for tanks. He does a ton of damage to tanks and his super is amazing versus them. Not only does it stop them and slow them down, it makes it really easy for him to charge up his next super. Not only does Spike have easy hits versus tanks, but they charge up his super a ton. 
So Spike has a lot of damage output throughout games. He can shoot around corners really well. He can deal a lot of damage on any situation. On a, He's pretty much good on every single map in Smash and Grab. So Spike, easily the best brawler in Smash and Grab in my opinion. All right, guys, so that's it for my ranking video. Let me know in the comments what you thought. Were there any brawlers you would have had a little bit higher or a little bit lower? Well, guys, that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you later.